Hello there, Internet. My name is Adam from Powerbelt 3 d Maybe we've met before, maybe we haven't, uh, but regardless, I have an exciting announcement for you. It's not exactly a secret project, but it's also not a project that I've talked about publicly so far. I made a podcast. The whole idea is to have a transparent, no BS conversation about the world of 3D printing and technology. See, I've been working with 3D printers from under $200 to over $200,000 through various jobs and at home for over seven years now, and by doing that, I've learned so much. One thing I noticed is that there tends to be a huge disconnect between the industrial 3D printing space and the hobby 3D printing space. They just tend not to talk to each other very much. On top of that, having launched Powerbelt 3D, I've learned that there's so much more to products and businesses and what those companies are trying to accomplish than just A, what someone like us might say in a press release, and B, what you might hear in a YouTube review. From what I've seen, and I guess you're welcome to agree or disagree, in a press release, everything is shiny and pretty and perfect and the company is, is doing great things and has very formal statements. Um, and on the other hand, in a YouTube review, a lot of times products get criticized solely based on one person's opinion, and that might not be the best reflection of that entire product or that entire company. If this sounds interesting at all to you, I would invite you and encourage you to go subscribe to the brand new 3D Print Authority YouTube channel. So far, I've interviewed a handful of people, and I've had a lot of fun doing it. In just a few seconds, you will get a quick taste of what you can expect from this new podcast. Until next time, happy printing. If I can design something and create something practically out of nothing, that's completely revolutionary. Was this entirely bootstrap self-funded? Because uh, from, from my experience, building 40 of something, it's a lot harder than building one. In the morning, I was taking some summer classes, and, you know, after that I would go and I would work, uh, you know, my job at the 3D printing lab until dinner time-ish. Go home, make some dinner, and I would come back from the lab from like 8 p.m. until like 2 a.m. and do it all over again. A lot of the manufacturing of filament was from weld rod. Okay. So, you know, it, the tolerances weren't really that high. They weren't really that great. And I'm certain there were probably some other companies emerging that were doing it, but at the time it wasn't that easy to find. So we kind of honestly have a, a, I don't know, a typical like started in a garage kind of story, which sounds kind of ridiculous, but, but that's really how it happened. What I think we all just saw was um, my brain breaking, thinking <laughs> about this, uh, this incredible future where digital manufacturing um, has this this explosive innovative effect 